Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and today is going to be a great day because we're going to be making history right now. As far as I know, this has never been done before. We're going to be creating a cutscene in Fortnite Creative 2.0, but just not any cutscenes. We're going to be creating my own cutscene in here. This is going to be crazy, all right? So with that being said, the first thing we're going to have to do is actually get some mocap or animations. Now, we can download mocap anywhere you want, but I created my own mocap at home using iPhones. Now, if you've been watching me a while, you know where this is going. So with that being said, here we are in my mocap volume, aka my kid's playroom, aka the couch where I usually do my casting. All I have set up are three phones, iPhones. It doesn't have to be an iPhone now. You can use a webcam, jitterbug, mid mobile, whatever you have, and this will work. I'm using three. You can do it with two if you want to. Obviously, in more phones, the better. So I have a camera right here, camera right here and obviously the camera facing me and I have this take that I recorded it's about 54 seconds long and look at this t-pose that is one crooked t-pose I, I gotta work on that that is embarrassing so here we go Your basically help. I'm not an actor just a disclaimer there so here we go I'm acting and then AI and move is going to do its thing and it's gonna spit out an animation from that so here we go got my t-pose boom it's gonna jump up and now I'm actually animating. Now, right now, you see this is actually a UE5 mannequin, which is perfect. They have like 17 different rigs you can retarget to. And then once that's done, I can download this as an FBX that we can bring in to Fortnite Creative 2.0. I went ahead and downloaded retargeted, and now we're back in UEFN. So we have our mocap. Again, you can use whatever you have, but we just created it using three phones in my mocap volume here. So here we are in the Unreal Editor for Fortnite or Fortnite Creative 2.0. And first thing we're gonna do is actually import our character. We have a JS Films avatar. I'll just put J in there. It's a regular FBX. So I'll drag and drop it in here. Minimize. I'm not gonna change anything. And then let's make sure that use time zero's reference post is selected. And I'll import that character. And then what I'll do is close this, go back to the folder, because we're gonna import some textures as well. So I'll just kind of select everything and drag and drop it in there. And uh, we'll start with armor. All right, so that's going to open up the material. Again, if you haven't seen my UFN beginner tutorial, check out the link in the description below. It's like 30 minutes. Perfect introduction to Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So here we go. We have the armor. So what I'll do is I'll type in armor here. That's going to give us body armor, base color. We have these four textures. I'll drag and drop it in there. And we're just going to plug them in, all right? So RGB goes to base color. And then we have an emissive in there as well. And we have a normal. And then this one right here is an actual texture pack. So we're going to go R for occlusion. And then we have roughness for G. And then B is going to be metallic. And then we'll apply that. I'll exit out of this. And we will drag and drop our character here. So you can see the story goes that, you know, our player arrives on a boat. So here's our character, and I want this character to be black, right? So I'm going to go right-click, multiply. I'm going to drag and drop that base color again, connect it back to A. And I'm going to change this to, say, negative 5. See what that looks like. That looks good. Okay. And since we can kind of see through here, I'll change this to two-sided. So I'll apply that so we're not seeing through that actual mesh. Perfect. So that's the first material it's already set up. Minimize that. And then what we'll do is go to the body next. Delete this. Save. Character's looking really good. All right, so next what we're going to do is click on our skeletal mesh. And I'm going to make this bigger so you can see better. We're going to go to the skeleton. We're going to go to this gear icon. Go to targeting options. We're going to set everything except for pelvis and root to skeleton. So hold shift. Right click. Retarget skeleton. Save. Minimize, and next what we'll do is import that mocap data that we got from Move. Minimize this, and since my character here, JS Films Avatar, is compatible with an Unreal Engine 5 mannequin that we use for Move AI, I really don't have to change anything. I can select this character here. We're going to be importing our animation to this character straight out. The animation length is going to be an animation time. And I just changed this to 60 so we're not taking forever. If you have longer animations, change that to 60. Because if not, you're going to be waiting a while. So I'll import that. See that we only have 2,500 keys, which is cool. And there you go. I'll close this here. And as you can see, if I double-click this animation, we're in that T-pose now. And it's going to snap up. Boom. Just like that, we have our animation inside UEFN. 
All right, so the fun doesn't stop there. Next, what we'll do is I'll go back to my content folder, right click, I'm gonna go to cinematics, level sequence, and I'm just gonna say JS. This is gonna create a level sequencer for us. Now I'm going to undock this so you can see it a little bit better since I'm on the bottom left corner of this right here. And I'm just gonna change the layout to one. So here is our actual sequencer up here, and I'll make this a little bit better for you so you can see right here. So we have our sequencer already set up right here. And let's start adding some things in here. First things first, let's add the character. So I'll click on the avatar, click track, actor sequence, and I'm just gonna say J. And then you're gonna see we have two mannequins in here. I think the other one is like the old one, so I'll delete that. And then I'm going to hold control, mouse out. This is set to 30 frames per second, which is fine. I'm now gonna go to the animation and choose mocap, which is our mocap data. And I'm gonna make this a little bit to the right. Now, this is going to include my T-pose. So what I'm going to do is actually cut it, right? So right here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit split section and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to move it to the left. So now if I go to zero and press play and press play right here, we're not counting the actual T pose and then I can just move this back. Additionally, I did have a microphone when I was recording the mocap. So what I'll do is again, import that audio in here. It's called lines.wave, just drag and drop right there. I'm gonna go click track, audio track, and now I'm just gonna say lines. And all we have to do now is line these up. So I'm gonna go to zero, make it bigger, move it to the left, and then press play. Greetings, traveler. I am Robro, and I need your help. It's actually not bad. These freaking statues are blocking my way home. I would punch them, but they are. So it is. It is a little bit. It is a little bit too early. Yeah. So the, the audio is a little bit too early. So what I'll do is, I'm gonna move this to the left. Greetings, traveler. I am Robro, and I need your help. These freaking statues are okay, so blocking that's, that, my way home. That actually looks a lot better. And what I'll do is I'll adjust this red line right here. So we're just adjusting that output. And next, what I'll do is I'll press zero right here. We're going to create a new camera. And I'm going to... I don't like where he's kind of standing right now. So I'm just going to go like this. Rotate him out. Go back to the camera, and I'm going to go back to my cinema camera actor here because I actually want to see the, you know, the statues on the back. And for the camera actor, I will select the focus, and I'm just going to focus our character right here so that we can see him a little bit better. And then let's go ahead and press play. Greetings, traveler. I am Robro, and I need your help. So what I'll do next is I'll go back to my viewport right here so I can move around. We have our camera set up already in there, and we already have a sequence in there. So the next thing we're going to need is a device from the Fortnite folder. So I'll go to Fortnite right now, and I'm going to type in cinema or cinematic, whatever. It's going to be a cinematic sequencer right here. I'm going to drag and drop it right here on the ground like so. And then on the right side of that, in the details panel, we're going to select my sequence, which is the JS sequence we created. And then next, what we're going to do is search in the Fortnite folder for a trigger. And we're going to have this trigger right here. So I'll drag and drop it right here. So basically what this is saying, whenever my character steps on this trigger, the sequence is going to play. All right. So a couple of things we're going to change right now. Now, by default, it comes with a VFX and the sound effects. I'm going to turn that off. So right here, trigger VFX trigger SFX right here. And additionally, I'm going to remove this mesh. So I'm not seeing that, right? It will be too stupid. It would look like a button. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the visibility of that. So that's looking great. And next, what I'll do is I'll select my cinema camera actor right here. And I'm going to say play function. And we're going to select our trigger right here. And it's going to say on triggered. So again, when my character steps on a trigger, it's going to play the cinematic. Now, with that being said, I don't know if this is the official way of doing this, but I got this to work, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and save right here. And what I'll do next is let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna launch the session and I'm gonna save everything that we just did. All right, so here we are. 
So here we are in game, and I'm going to increase this to 1440p. Said so everything is good. Go back. All right, so here we are in the actual game itself. We have our environment, and we have our character on the right, right there behind the tank. And like I said, since we hit that mesh, you're not going to see anything in here, but we know it's around this area. And obviously, I think what I'm going to do next is create a blueprint class so I can have an idle animation before it actually triggers. But let's see if this works. Greetings, traveler. I am Robro, and I need your help. These freaking statues are blocking my way home. I would punch them, but they are nanites, so they're packed with triangles. Get it? Nanite triangles? Anyway, could you please get rid of them for me? I'll make it worth your while. Alright, it's crazy because I have like hardware ray tracing turned on, and you can still actually see the character, even though it's not in the view, but this is huge. Whenever I saw Move AI a couple of years ago, Fortnite came to mind because of this. Because the potential of this, we're just talking, this is small. How about the dances? Can we now make our own dances and sell it in here and make some V-Bucks? Epic Games opened the Pandora's box with this, and I don't think they're going to be able to close it back up. Now, this is amazing and all, but there's always going to be a bad side of this, and I feel bad, because how are they going to regulate this? Because technically, once I create this game, I can submit it, and they will review it. How are they going to review the mocap stuff that I'm making here? Imagine millions of people doing what I just did, which I'm pretty sure this video is going to go virus. If not this video, somebody's going to copy this video and then upload it in Tic Tac, and that's going to go viral. But imagine millions of people creating their own mocap and putting it in here, and Epic, they have to review that. They have to approve this to go public. I don't know how they're going to be able to do that, but I am interested to know how. I'm just going to wait and watch because this right here is going to be absolutely insane. All right. But with that being said, that is it for this video. Again, you saw it first. This is world first. Okay. Custom cutscenes in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Fortnite Creative 2.0. So with that being said, if you haven't done so, check out my courses on ArtStation. I have a couple of Unreal Engine, five courses on there. Pretty cool stuff. Additionally, I did just upload a beginner's guide for UEFN or Fortnite Creative 2.0 not so long ago. Check out those links in the description below, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.